Hello. I'm recording this from home. Uh, it's my sermon that I originally entitled Celebrating Our Diverse Families. I changed the title though, and it's in two parts. So I'm going to share my screen with you. Uh, let me hide these. Uh, So I've retitled this, Family, It's Complicated, Musings by Reverend Jane. And I think as you, uh, as we go through this, uh, you'll find out maybe why I changed the title. <clears throat> it's in two parts. And the first part is one in which I thought we might look at the evolution of the TV family. Because I think as we look at the evolution of the TV family, we can think a little more about evolution of our own families. TV, you know, started late 40s. Uh, some of us didn't get TVs until in the 50s, of course. But uh, one of the first ones, first family, TV families, were the Anderson and uh, Father Knows Best. This actually started on radio and then came to TV. This was a very traditional family for the 1950s. And here you see the mother, she, all, she stayed at home wore the pearls around her neck and her apron when she was doing housework or cooking and the children. And then usually there was a dog. Uh, the father went off to work and came back home at night. They always had some problem they were dealing with. He would figure things out and it would be wonderful because father knows best. Now in my own home in the fifties, it was sort of like this too, although my mama did work, but my uh, father certainly thought that he knew best. He was the boss of the family. As he thought, that's the way it's supposed to be. And he thought he knew best and he shared that with us. He also shared it with my mom. I can remember my mom before she, when it would get time to vote, he would sit down there with the sample ballot and he'd tell her every person to vote for. And she would shake her head and smile. And I just thought that was odd. And I said, mama, do you really vote for the, everybody that daddy tells you to vote for? And she whispered to me, she said, Jane, when we're behind the curtain, they don't know what we're doing when we vote. I vote for who I want to vote for. So she was trying to teach me at that early age how you lived your life so that you could do what you wanted to do, though with some deception. My church taught me that too. We had a program when I was a young adult on the total woman where they came in and told us how by being submissive, we could work that in a way to get what we wanted. You know, So Father Knows Best was the, was the word at the time for some folks, I guess still is. Other families. We had um, something that wasn't as traditional. With we had a blended family. You had these two families that got together. She had the girls. He had the boys. They made one big family. Um, with Alice there as the housekeeper, she was a member of the family as well. So that stretched our views of the family a little bit. Uh, of course, we uh, later found out that the character playing the father was gay, and the character playing the oldest son was hitting on the character playing the mother, but we don't need to let that affect our enjoyment of and our uh, fun with this. Everybody has their own lives behind the scenes, but this was the, uh, the family, the blended family of the Brady Bunch. Um, another one that came along after that was a comedy, really, a parody of All in the Family, and this was a multi-generation family. With, multi, with different views and different ideas in the two different generations, very conservative Archie Bunker. And then you had his daughter and son-in-law living in the same house with very different views. And that made for a lot of com uh, comedy and a lot of fun. Um, I enjoyed watching this program as a parody. Interestingly, my dad really enjoyed it too because he identified with Archie Bunker and he just loved the things Archie would say to Edith and the meathead, et cetera. So, um, we could watch that one together, though, through di different lens as we watched it. There was a spinoff called The Jeffersons. And this gave us uh, an all black, well, 
the part the family initial family was a black family that had moved on up uh moved on up to the east side and then they too had a maid that was a part of that family but an interesting thing that related to this family as well was their neighbors who became we got to know their family as well especially since their uh daughter ended up marrying the jefferson's son and this family the uh, willis's were uh a um uh, white man and a black woman. So we saw that every week on our, our on our television screens, and it got us a little more used to seeing that. And and uh, it was done in a comic way. We, so there will be some things now that we probably shake our head at, but um, it was still another level, another type of diversity, and another way to see the family. Another show with a, a black family was the Cosby Show. And this was different in the woman in this one, the wife, she worked as well. She was a professional. So she went off, she was a lawyer. So she took her briefcase every morning. Uh, he was a gynecologist that went down into the basement to do his work. And of course, again, now that we know more, we, you know, that it's harder to watch those things when you know so much, but it was a good show. And uh, a lot of, uh, um, comedy fun things but a lot of fun but a lot of things about family togetherness and how to deal with uh, difficulties within a family the huxtables um whole house was interesting that showed another kind of diversity another kind of family in that you had these men raising children you had the dad and his brother and his best friend raising these three girls and uh of course that uh it's good to see that so you can say yes men can effectively raise families and I especially like that now that I realize that my grandson and his brother will be the um, adults in the household for my great grandchildren. Of course, they'll have a lot of grandma help as well. But um, men can raise children and the Tanners did it. Uh, will and Grace, they were not family by um, traditional modes. They weren't related but they lived together and kind of formed their own family unit. Uh, he was gay and uh, she was straight and they were, they had a uh, close relationship and they shared an apartment and they were in our house every week and we delightful. And they're friends you see below too, you know, with another gay guy and uh, another uh, interesting woman. And um, at the time I was divorced and one of my gay friends had moved into the house with me and we were housemates. So we would watch Will and Grace and thought, oh, there we are. You know, here's, uh, we, we were reflected in, in pop culture now, you know, and it's okay. Well, our little family unit we're forming is good. Um, and it is reflected on television. Uh, then you have the modern family. Now, this is a little bit of everything, you know, modern families are sometimes. They get pretty complicated when you try to explain your family relationship sometimes. You got the dad, and he's married to a much younger woman who already had a son, and they're Hispanic, and so there's stepson, stepfather. And uh, then you have his children who have her as their stepmother, and one of his children uh, is uh, gay and is married to this other man and they have a child and you had this other family as well um, and lots of things going on, but um, complexities galore, but that's the modern family. It's complicated. And then uh, something I'm watching right now is called Pose. I'm watching this on Netflix. Um, and it's uh, set, the setting for this is the 80s, but it was a time when folks really needed to form their own families, especially this, these were about, um, at that time they called it transsexual. Now we would say transgender women and gay men who came together. They were rejected from their own families. They came together and found new families in this particular kind of lifestyle where they would go to these balls and pose and they would have a mother figure who would actually take, have, these would be her children. And uh, it, it reflected a kind of family um, in that. And you saw a lot of the same kinds of love and difficulties that you do in other kinds of families. So diversity again. So those are all kinds of, of ways the family unit and the way we see families has evolved through the ages. And it makes you think kind of about maybe how your own family has changed and evolved. So I'm going to give a little time to silence while I stop the share for you all to think about how your family unit 
has evolved through the years or are those of others that you know? Maybe it hasn't, um, but maybe it has. So part two, this of family, it's complicated. Who is in your family? Is your family a static or dynamic variable? Does it change? Mine sure has. Like the changes in the TV families, my family has changed through the years to become something that is very unlike father knows best. And for the most part, that's a good thing. The difficulty comes with in having a more dynamic or changing family is the insecurity that it may pose those who feel vulnerable. Everyone needs to know they have some people they can count on, some folks who will love them no matter what. Is that possible in today's world? I sure hope so. But I don't think it's something that is just automatic. It's something that we must nurture. And I think that the family is not only something our congregation should celebrate, but nurture. How can we do this as a congregation? Well, first, I think we need to look at the family structures that many of us have. Did you know that about 15 of our folks live alone? That doesn't mean they are lonely. Many of them are very connected to other family members or friends. But I think we need to make sure that all who want it have a church member to check in on them regularly. I had an aunt, my dad's youngest sister, who lived alone in her house in Sylvania after her husband died. Aunt Ramona was not the kind of person who makes friends easily. And according to neighbors, she just stayed to herself. They did see her walking every day. Her two sons lived in Athens and Atlanta. I made some assumptions that I should not have made about her involvement or lack of it with others, including her church. In July 2010, neighbors realized they'd not seen her for a while and went to check. Now, when they did this, they saw that she didn't answer the door, but the television was on. They called the police who broke in and found her between her bedroom and the bathroom dead. She had been dead quite some time. Because the house seemed to be in somewhat disarray with things turned over, etc., the police did not rule out criminal activity and sent her body for an autopsy. The report was that she died of natural causes. I hope she died quickly. But perhaps not. You know, she was my aunt. I could have been calling to check on her. I did not. And I regret that. Perhaps that's why I'm as concerned as I am about checking in on folks. So let's make a plan. Now, the great majority of our folks live with one or more other adults, and no children. Many of them are retired. Although there is thankfully someone that knows their condition, that doesn't mean they, and I guess I should say we because I'm in that group, don't need support as well. It would be great if all our folks could be connected in some small group ministry, like our sisterhood or men's groups or other support circles. I bet we could make that happen then a much, much smaller number of our folks live with children, some as single parents and others with another adult. These children are our future. But our congregation has not done enough to attract and retain these families. Are we welcoming enough families with children? What can we do better as we come out of this pandemic? Those are some of the challenges for our congregation to grapple with 
as we make plans for the next five years or more. But we should also challenge ourselves to make better connections with our own family members, both those that live with us and those who do not. And of course, family can mean more than those who are related by blood or adoption or marriage. As we come out of this pandemic, can we perhaps make more of an effort to connect with family? Is it time for a family reunion? I love seeing pictures of Dolly Parton with her family and the prelude we had earlier. I don't have that kind of connection with family and perhaps never will with extended family, but I do need to nurture what I do have and I'll commit to doing that. Like many of you, I know what it's like to lose family members. So we need to share our love while we can. Now that can be hard because families are so complicated. It's difficult for some mem family members to accept change or to change themselves. And when one family member struggles, it affects the rest of the family. Bowen's family systems theory explains how we evolved to be somewhat interconnected. And sometimes we need to understand those possibilities as we seek to work on ourselves and our families. I encourage you to study more about that to understand and perhaps engage in therapy, which helps you see these connections and understand where boundaries should exist and more. Families are complicated, but families are love. Love is not easy. It must be nurtured. Now, in the original title for this series, I said we were going to be celebrating our diverse families. But you know what? As I look through our directory, I realize we are not so diverse. What, we have family, different family unit sizes. But in terms of other diversity, we are mostly white, straight, cisgendered, older folks. We used to attract more LGBTQ people. Are we not reaching out to those in our community as much as we used to do? And what can we do to make sure we're welcoming of families of color as well as younger families? I think we can do better and need to do better before we celebrate our diverse families. As a part of our look at the future, our 25th anniversary, I believe we're going to have the opportunity to think about some strategic planning. Could part of our planning involve how we attract and nurture more diverse families? I hope so. I'll close with the words from the course of Dolly Parton's family, song family. I like the song and I like, like the words of this chorus. When it's family, you forgive them, for they know not what they do. When it's family, you accept them, because you have no choice but to. When it's family, they're a mirror of the worst and best in you. And they always put you to the test and you always try to do your best. And just pray for God to do the rest when it's family. Amen and blessed be. Thank you.